Funding for Not a Vampire is provided by viewers like you. Find perks and bonus content at patreon.com slash not a vampire. Thank you. Guys, we've been sleeping on Mamma Mia. Yeah, yeah, the story doesn't make sense. A simple paternity test would have solved everything. Basically, there are no consequences for anything. Pierce Brosnan really shouldn't sing. It's just a bunch of pretty people hanging out in a pretty setting for 90 minutes. And I'm living for it. Not just because I haven't really gone anywhere in three years, but actually, yeah, it's kind of because of that. Hiding out at home and avoiding people more than usual has really taught me to appreciate movies that are just fun romps. Ones that exist to take you on a silly, lighthearted ride filled with cute relationship moments and hilariously choreographed musical numbers. Maybe I want the third act downer to be a small fight between people who love each other enough to still get married after it. No real stakes can be quite refreshing when going outside is quite literally dangerous. And I really have to give Mamma Mia credit. It's an easy movie to suspend my disbelief with. Suspension of disbelief is a thing you have to possess if you want to get into musical theater. It's the part of your brain that accepts Hamilton and Jefferson aren't literally rapping about the French Revolution, but its presentation is a creative expression of the scene. And I find myself using this mode of viewing when I watch Mamma Mia. You could call it turning your brain off, but I think that's a bad way to phrase it. I'm accepting that IRL the movie wouldn't play out like this and putting it aside to appreciate what I do like about it. And it helps that the songs are well staged, the dance numbers are fun, they're using some of ABBA's best tunes, and most of the cast can sing well. Like come on, this is comedy and musical film gold right here. So why didn't I like Mamma Mia 2? Well, mostly because Mamma Mia 2 just isn't fun. Everyone is so depressed in this film, it just makes me flip from sad to bored. Everyone is down because Donna is dead, Sophie and Skye's relationship is falling apart, Rosie and Bill broke up, it's just one big cry fest. And it really doesn't get better. Outside of the flashback portion of the film, all of the characters are melancholy or trying to cheer up other characters to the point where the big happy finale doesn't feel like a triumph. It's just a prerequisite. A box for the movie to check off because that's what you came here for, right? And even the flashback portions have an air of bleakness to them because we know how this will end. Eventually Donna winds up alone and abandoned to give birth to Sophie and later run the hotel on her own. Now, this isn't to say that you can't get lost in the fun and promised portions of tragic stories. Hadestown and Titanic are great examples of this. Before the tragedy strikes, you get lulled or eagerly pulled into thinking, maybe this time it'll be different. Maybe Orpheus won't turn back, or maybe this time Rose and Jack will start a new life in America after they're rescued by the Carpathia. You get to experience the genuine hope of the characters before everything goes to pot. But I can't get that in Mamma Mia 2 because even the happy portions are bookended by sad, depressed Sophie and current day characters. I'm reminded throughout the movie that any joy experienced in the flashbacks will eventually end in sorrow. There's no space for me to feel hope because the movie won't let me forget how bad everything is and will eventually be. That's not what I came to Mamma Mia for! No, I came to Mamma Mia to see people dance and sing to ABBA songs with juicy yet relatable drama in between. And the movie does deliver on the drama somewhat, but not in a fun way. The most fun I had was with the flashback portions with young Donna, but even then, fun is a stretch. I wouldn't describe seeing the movie completely rewrite Sophie's conception story as enjoyable. It basically forces me to notice the wires in this high-flying circus. I can't not think about how the three suitors look nothing like the first movie showed them to be, or how the little island isn't the connecting line between the pairs of lovers, or that the sequence of life events is literally not what the first movie said happened. Basically, it forces me to break my suspension of disbelief and short circuit as I try to make sense of this thing that is supposed to be a sequel to a movie I love. And then everything else around it is just not worth it. On top of everyone being depressed, overall the music performances are just… eh. The songs are good and the actors perform them well, but they seem more shoved into the story this time around. Cher's lover is named Fernando? Bam. Song. Graduation scene? Bam. I kiss the teacher. And then we get songs that we saw staged in the last movie again, but 
worse? Man, I prefer Dancing Queen as a girl anthem over just a song to sing as the grand opening guest boat in. When Mamma Mia was Donna's mixed feelings from seeing her three lovers after 20 years of silence rather than a post-breakup cheer-up? Like really, it doesn't work because Donna is singing that she shouldn't have let Sam go even though at this point she thinks that he was never going to choose her and their romance was always a lie. Or the song I Have a Dream being Sophie's hope for the future instead of insinuating that Donna always wanted to fix up the hotel instead of being the party girl that she was set up as in the last movie. You just get a sense that the movie itself thinks they already used up all the good ABBA songs or that they need to somehow fit in recognizable ones because, well... I don't know, people only care about those songs? I guess the only time I liked having to re-listen to a previously used song was unfortunately Pierce Brosnan reprising S.O.S., but this time reframing it as him being unsure of how to move on without Donna because she's literally dead instead of just rejecting him as a person. Really, Donna being dead was a huge mistake. Everyone spends the movie mourning her, which creates most of the depressed air in the film. Like, why couldn't the story be about Sophie trying to use remodeling and reopening the hotel to distract her from her relationship problems while Donna and company try to support and steer her towards facing the conflict with Skye? We could still have flashbacks to Donna's past, like maybe she ties her life into the current trouble Sophie is experiencing. We could even have the boring plot point of Bill and Harry not being able to attend the grand reopening, but then running into Fisherman Guy and getting to the island just in time. Sure, Sophie will still be sad, but she'll at least be surrounded by people who aren't constantly breaking into sobs at the mention of her mom. Oh, and you can still include the weirdly judgy passport guy. He was funny. Seriously. All the best comedic lines come at the end of the movie when people are allowed to be happy again. I want more of that! More of the dad trio, Tanya one-liners, just enjoying the strange family surrounding Sophie. And while Cher is cool and gee it's swell that she's managed to have such a storied career spanning from the 1960s till today, they really dropped the ball on naturally integrating her into the story. Like, putting aside that Granny Sheridan is nothing like the Catholic hardliner who openly condemns women who have sex outside of marriage that Donna was accused of mimicking in the first film, what is her function in the story? She just shows up in the last half hour as though Sophie's pregnancy reveal wasn't enough to end on? She rolls up like the boss she is, hand waves decades of complete non-existence in Sophie's life, but it's kind of okay now because she's ready to be a grandparent. Sophie hugs her, reunites with Fernando, who you clock from his first appearance would be the guy Cher apparently was heartbroken over. And now she just exists in the world as a scene character. Seriously, if I were Cher, I would feel robbed. You could cut her out of the movie and nothing would change. You could even rewrite the joke where Tanya is smitten with Fernando's brother to work without him or Granny Sheridan. And that's pretty sad, especially considering how much of the marketing highlighted that Cher would be in this film. But it'd be wrong of me not to pay respect to the baptism scene. I always tear up, if not cry when I watch it. Even seeing a clip of it to write the script had me bleary-eyed. This is a slipping through my fingers song of Mamma Mia 2, and boy is this a triumph. For once, they used Donna's life as a beautiful parallel for Sophie's current circumstances. You really get the sense of the love between mother and daughter, which will then carry between Sophie and her own child. That she can feel in this moment what Donna must have felt when Sophie came into this world and use that connection to cherish her mother even more. The song and scene hit me way harder than any lamenting of Donna's passing in the rest of the film did. I mean, it helps that we have Meryl Streep singing it, and she's present in the scene even in a symbolic, metaphorical way. <sighs> this isn't fair. I can't go into the happy dance number ending while I'm a sobbing mess. Maybe they did this so that I'd enjoy the glittery and overly joyful song more? Cause I adore it too. This is cruel, but I'm loving it. Why couldn't the rest of the movie be like this? And even better, this wonderful story beat could be rewritten with Donna still alive. Make it a sensitive, intimate moment shared between her and Sophie. Donna is literally physically there, and they silently have the mother-to-mother -mother connection while cutting back to Sophie's own baptism. Man, now I'm convinced that in an alternate world, I could've actually loved this movie with some tweaks made. I wish Mamma Mia 2 was just a continuation of everything I've grown to love in the first film. 
If only it managed to balance the dream and darker moments with the whimsy and utter fun. I truly am sad that I don't like Mamma Mia 2 because I feel like I lost it out in some way. Like, there are good elements that I'm just not going to continuously revisit like I would the first movie just because of how bad it is. Well, the best I could do is hope that the people who made it had fun, because I can't say I had fun watching it. Thank you for consuming this video. If you'd like to hang out in a Discord server my friends and I made, follow this Discord invite link. You can find me on Twitter at NotVampire. And if you'd like to support this channel, um, check me out on patreon.com slash NotVampire. Thank you very much for consuming this video, and until next time. Or the song, I have a dream being Sophie's hope for the future, instead of insinuating that Donna always wanted to fix up the hotel instead of being the party girl that she was set up as the... Fuck. I guess the only time I liked having to re-listen to a previous... I guess the only time I liked having to re-listen to a previously used song was unfortunately Pierce Brosnan reprising s <laughs> Maybe they did this so that I'd enjoy the overly joyful and glitterly s I guess the only time I liked having to re-listen to a previously used song was unfortunately Pierce Brosnan reprising SOS, but this time framing it as him being unsure how to- God damn it, I hate that I wrote this line because ah! Alright, I guess the only time I liked having to re-listen to a previously used song was unfortunately Pierce Brosnan reprising SOS, but this time rephrasing- I, I hate this, I hate this fucking line!